Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me. My name is Tony and I'm here with the Everyday Counts program. We have an hour together for chair yoga. We'll be spending the first part of the class in the chair and the second part of the class lying down on our back. Sometimes when the floor feels a little bit too far away, you can always bring the floor to you by laying on a reclined chair um, or lying on your bed or lying on a sofa if that feels more comfortable for you. Somewhere that you can move and be completely supported and not worried about being falling off anything. Um, so, something to consider. And when we come down onto our back, we're going to be using something like a yoga block. Now, I understand that not everybody has a yoga block lying around, so a great way to substitute this is maybe um, your favorite thick book and just wrap it in a towel, like a, a small towel, a hand towel. And all we're going to be doing is placing it between our legs and it just gives us a little bit of um, engagement there and a little bit more feedback. You can do everything without the block or your substitute block. So I'm just going to put that over to the side and we will get to that later. Making sure that to start today you have a comfortable chair and one that your is nice and stable, that you feel nice and stable on, and that you've got a bunch of space around you. So if you move your arms, move your legs, you're not going to be knocking over any plants or anything. Deciding for yourself how to start today. So for a lot of us, the back of that chair is a great place to get the support from, and for some of us, pulling away from the back of the chair so our spine um, supports itself, the muscles having to do the work feels a little better. You can come forward and back and utilize each one. Um, there's not one that's better than the other. Turn up today and meet your body where it's at. Meaning that we wish it were a particular way. Um, and we woke up this morning and maybe there's a little crick in your neck or maybe there's some discomfort somewhere else or some tightness in a particular area. Meaning our body where we're at is we spend a little time at the beginning of class tuning in and listening to what's happening in our body and how we're doing today. And then we take that information and we bring it into our practice so it informs what we do, how much we do, when we rest, and how much we rest. So to start off, let's root down through our feet, a comfortable distance for you. It's going to look different for each and every one of us. You can pick up the toes if you like, spread them nice and wide, push down through the balls of the feet, from the pinky edge side to the big toe side. So we get that kind of even, push down through the heels as well, even left to right. Usually we have a, um, a slight inclination to go even more towards the outside or inside of our feet, depending on um, who you are and how your body's put together. And we're gonna try and even that up. Push down a little bit into the support underneath you, whatever that may be. And it's okay if you've got shoes or socks on, no big deal. And we push down just to wake up the soles of the feet, take our awareness down to the support underneath us. And then allow that pressure to ebb away and let the toes softly drift to the earth. So no gripping there with the toes as best as you're able. A great way to settle your awareness all the way down is to close your eyes or soften or lower your gaze and we go inwards. And noticing the surface underneath you, again, whether it's socks, shoes, whether it's a mat, whether it's the floor or a carpet or whatever you have underneath you. Notice how you notice that in your feet. You can imagine it, you can sense it, you could feel it. And then allow the legs to relax and release any tension so the feet really are taking the weight of your legs. Allowing any tension, tightness to dissolve away. And then we'll take our awareness up to where our seat meets the chair. 
Same thing here, you can wiggle and wiggle from side to side, just like we kind of push down evenly into the feet. Depending on the kind of chair you're on, you might notice those two bony bits underneath you, that's the base of the pelvis as you move from left to right. We want to even that up as best as we can. I apologize for the, um, the noise of construction here. We have a little construction right now. And um, it's a really good um, practice to see whether we're really focusing on our practice or whether we're taken away by external noises and distractions. So we're we evening up left to right here. And then we start to notice if the shoulders are forward of the hips or they're back of the hips and seeing if we can balance them more or less over the top of the hips. And again, it's going to be different for each and every one of us because we're all put together differently. Our bodies are doing different things. So um, coming to a place that feels sustainable and comfortable for you. We'll take a big breath in, all the way in, fill up with air and on that exhale, let it go with a and let your upper body sit down into the support of the pelvis. And let's do that a couple more times. And we start to let go of tightness, tension, and really let, and do that one more time, really let the pelvis and the feet support you. And obviously the earth and the chair are supporting you, but we notice that grounding. And then from there, we lift up through the spine. So lifting up through the heart just a little, as if the crown of the head got one millimeter taller towards the ceiling. And then roll the shoulders back and down a couple of times. And so maybe this is the first time today. Stay away from the stories as to, ah, my right shoulder, it's not feeling so good because maybe I slept on it weird. That's the story. We're just like, huh, curious. That's what I noticed today. And then let the shoulders settle back and down. Get this broadness across the chest here and across the upper back too. You can um, drop the chin a little so the back of the neck is long if you like and draw the back of the skull maybe back just a centimeter or two. And here we have this mindful posture and this may be really comfortable for you or you may be here thinking it's not comfortable at all. So we take a breath in. And then make any adjustments by softening, relaxing tension, maybe easing something into a place that feels comfortable for you. So we are mindful about our posture, but we're overriding everything to find comfort in the body. So we still have this connection, this rootedness, and we still are rising through the upper body. We're still broadening across the torso and yet we do it in a way that is manageable for us. And again, it's gonna look different for each and every one of us. There is no way of doing this wrong. Mm -hmm. If there is any tension and tightness there, discomfort, if there's any intuitive movement you need now or at any time in the class, please take it. And this is the backwards and forwards. This is the conversation we have with our bodies constantly. What is it that our body is asking us to do? And then mindfully noticing how we can honor the body and what it needs. So you're listening to me a little bit at the time, but mostly you're listening to your body, adjusting anything I suggest and adapting it to work with your body and not against it. And this is when we meet the body where it's at. And we're gonna stay here. And if you haven't already, soften your gaze or close your eyes, and we're going to take that little check-in. We're going to notice, offer yourself the words, the question, how am I doing in this moment? Let anything arise. Try to stay away from stories and just be curious. As if you were really noticing yourself, maybe for the first time today, how am I doing in this moment? What's on my mind? Asking yourself that question, what is on my mind in this moment? It might be very familiar to you, or it may be something that um, comes up that you're like, hi, I didn't even notice that. And again, meet it with a curiosity, no judgment. 
Take your awareness down into your body. How is my body feeling today? You might notice emotions. You might notice sensations. The mind does like to attach stories to those every time that happens, and it will happen. Just notice, ah, oh, there it is. There's my story about, oh, I shouldn't have done so much gardening yesterday, or maybe I bent a little bit too low, and that's because of this, or... And then, ha, huh, that's a story. How is my body feeling today? Energy levels. What is the energy that you're feeling in your body today? Maybe you're full of beans, maybe you're not quite so full of beans, maybe you're not quite sure, and it's okay not to know as well. This is, if this is a new practice for you, this checking in, sometimes we're asking these questions and the answer is, I haven't got a clue, I really don't know. And that's okay, that's where we start. Hmm, interesting, I really am not connected to how my body feels today. No judgment. And then we start to notice how the breath moves in the body. And you might start to notice that up in your shoulders or your upper chest is the most common place to notice it. Or you might notice your breath in a completely different part of the body. It may be around your nose or your mouth where the air comes in and out. If it feels comfortable for you, starting to breathe in and out through the nose. And we do this because it's smaller than the mouth, so it slows the breath down. And if that's not comfortable for you, then breathe in your easy way, but start to deepen and lengthen the breath. We deepen the inhale and lengthen the exhale in your own way. There's no magical way of breathing. We're just trying to lengthen. And then we smooth. We smooth the inhale all the way to the top of the breath. Brief pause, smoothing that exhale all the way down to the bottom as best as we can. We're never looking for perfect. Again, we're meeting ourselves where we're at in this moment. And if some parts feel a little jumpy and jagged, know that it's completely normal. That is why we cultivate a breath practice. It's not that we nail it the first time or even the thousandth time. It's that we show up and we practice. That's why yoga is called a practice. Never a perfect. So we've got that smoother, more mindful breath coming in and out. And now offer yourself some softness. So if you're straining or forcing the breath in any way or feeling like it should be a particular way, let that go. Even if it means the breath gets a little smaller, a little softer, and we still have that deeper, longer, smoother breath, but with this quality of softness. And I'm going to offer you a mantra, which is just a sound, a sound both on the inhale and exhale, to occupy the mind a little. And if we occupy the mind a little, then the thoughts come. Um, and bring us away less regularly. So it's mantra is literally, um, the direct translation is a tool for the mind or a mind tool. So on that inhale, from the bottom of the inhale all the way to the top, we're gonna say inside ourselves, silently to ourselves, ah. So ah, A-H if you like, ah. And then on that exhale, hum, H-U-M, ah. And start to blend the sound of the mantra aham with the sound of the breath itself, with the rhythm of your breath. Aham. And let it be a soft sound inside of yourself. You might notice that it sounds a little bit like the inhale and the exhale coming out. You can kind of blend that aham with the sound of the breath. And if this feels like it's way too much going on, you can just let that go and steady the breath. And we root down through our feet and seat and rise. Uh -huh. And we soften the shoulders back and down the board and across the heart space. Uh -huh. 
And at any time during the class today, you can come back to the stillness. Ah, hum. At the very tip of your nose. Keeping everything else as still as possible and as steady as you can. Start to create a small figure of eight in front of you. Going slowly, moving with the length of the breath. So one figure of eight for one breath. Mm -hmm. And those figure of eights can stay really small. If it doesn't feel good in your neck, then um, pause or another movement, or you can create slightly bigger figure of eights, noticing how does this feel in my body? How's my body responding to this? You can close the eyes, soften the gaze. That obviously, um, when we turn out the eyesight, then we get a much more internal focus. Ah, hum. Maybe those figure of eight start to shift and change. A little different, a little bigger, a little smaller. Maybe you pause. And we're noticing, how am I experiencing this? Am I noticing it in my neck, my upper back, my shoulders, my throat, my jaw? Adjust the movement to suit you. One of your next exhales will pause and take that figure of eight in the opposite direction. Be gentle with yourself. Mm -hmm. Go with the length of your breath. You don't have to match anybody else. Your body knows the rhythm it wants to move in. And then when you're ready, let's take another three or four breaths unless you're resting, shifting and changing those figure of eights to suit you. And then we'll come all the way back through center when you're ready, allowing that right hand to dangle down. With the head of your arm bone, figure of eight with the right shoulder. And you can allow that arm to be heavy, or maybe it feels better for you to pick up that elbow. You get to choose. Mm -hmm. Noticing everything, steadying the breath. Ah, hum. And we'll pause when you're ready and take those figure of eights around in the opposite direction. You may notice that you feel this in different parts of your body. Be gentle with yourself. Meeting yourself where you're at. So if you need to rest or shift or change something, please do. And then at the end of one of your next exhales or when you feel ready, we'll pause. That arm a little shake. We we'll take the right hand down to support. Left hand softens, and with that shoulder figure of eight on the left side. Just be curious. Meet every moment with curiosity as we smooth the breath and trying to meet that steady breath with the steadiness of movement as best as we can. And again, it's going to look different for each and every one of us. And maybe this side needs a little bit more elbow or something else. You can always shift, make the movement your own. Ah, hum. We'll pause at the end of one of your next exhales and go around in the opposite direction. Steady and smooth. Mm -hmm. And then when you're ready, we'll pause and come back through center. Any intuitive movements, please go ahead. We're bending both elbows. 
And then from here, we're gonna draw that right elbow back, up, over and forward. So the right shoulder comes forward, the left shoulder and elbow goes back, up, over. So as if we linked our hands, we're now creating kind of that figure of eight with the elbows. Mm -hmm. And those movements can be as big or as small as you like, but see if you can connect them to the breath. The last add-on here, rather than a long spine, is to scoop the belly in, round the back body so the ribs are wide, maybe drawing the chin down, and then we're getting that length over the back of the body, back of the shoulders, rib cage, you might even feel this, all the way down through that lower back. Go at your own pace. And again, those arm movements can be your own. If you want to extend those arms, then you can, or stay with the elbows. Lifting, you get to choose. And let's take another two either side, unless you're resting. Stay with that smoothness of movement, curiosity. And then we come all the way back up through center, feeling maybe that back body got a little bit of an opening, keeping those elbows bent, we're going around in the opposite direction. So from now, we're bringing the right elbow forward, up, rounded back and then to the left. Mm -hmm. One at a time. Ah, hum. That inhale lifts the elbow, the exhale draws it down. And now we're getting this opening underneath the armpits through the side of the body. And the add-on is lifting up through the heart space so the shoulder blades draw towards each other a little. And then we get this opening across the front of the body, drawing the chin in. You can, of course, lengthen the chin if you feel like it, but lengthen the back of the neck as you do it. So now we're opening up across the shoulders, that beautiful heart space, the pectoral muscles, of course, and all the way from your pubic bone if those front ribs are sliding forward. Listen to the sound of your breath. Blend the sound with the mantra. And then we'll take one more either side or two more breaths. Mm -hmm. And then we're coming back through center, rooting to rise. Hands come back on the legs of the arms of the chair and steady the breath. Notice how am I doing in this moment? How's my body feeling? Notice your breath, steady and smooth the breath. If you're sitting into the back of your chair as we come down through the spine, you may want to come forward a little, giving yourself a little bit of space, or not, you get to choose. On the inhale, we're going to draw the shoulder blades towards each other. We've kind of been here a little bit with the um, elbows. This is the inhale. On the exhale, send the fingertips towards the knees and around the top of the shoulders. Inhaling and exhaling. Great place to stay. Adding on, coming down through the spine. Inhaling, we're arching the back. On the exhale, crushing the back of the ribs towards the back of the chair. And now we're coming down through that thoracic and mid spine. Inhale, sending the tailbone out behind you to get really down into that lumbar spine if it feels good to you. On the exhale, sit back to the back of the pelvis. So we're tucking the tail here. You can, of course, come into the cervical spine on the inhale, lifting the chin, lengthening the back of the neck. On the exhale, curling the chin down. If that feels too much for you, no need to do it. You can bring this down into your legs on that exhale. Push down evenly both feet. Keep the toes nice and soft. Inhaling, imagine dragging the heels of the feet back towards the chair. Exhaling, pushing down. And this gets a whole body mo uh, movement. Ah, um, noticing with curiosity. Where are you feeling this? Are there some areas you're trying to rush through? Are there some that feel really good that you want to stay there for a breath or two? Please listen to what it is that you need. Excellent.
excellent place to stay right here. If you want to add on, let's take those hands either side of you. And we're adding weight as the arms are added. On the inhale, as if you're holding a beach ball, let's bring the arms up. Any height as big or small a beach ball as your shoulders need. On the exhale, as we curl around, maybe the hands go down, maybe even back by the hips. Inhaling, you get that extension of the spine. Exhaling, we round, maybe taking the torso a little further down. Mm -hmm. You get to choose what feels good to you. And of course, adding the arms is just an extension of the spine. If that feels too much, then stay with the hands on the legs, sliding up and down. One is not better than the other. Let's take another three breaths. Mm -hmm. Always smoothing the breath. Ah, hum. And then we're coming all the way back up through at center, making any adjustments you need to to feel good. And then we're going to take those hands across the chest, so just crossing them over the heart space, lifting up the heart space right into the palms of the hands. Sitting the shoulders back a little and the chin draws in back of the skull, um, comes back a little. So imagine that your back body is leaning up against a wall. This is the inhale on the exhale, keeping those wide collarbones, you know, tip over towards the right side. Keep the left hip anchored as we come up through center and over to the left side, keep the right hip anchored. So we're getting that lateral flexion in the spine here. It's not a very big movement for us. And depending on what's going on in your body, one side may feel very different from another. Just meet it with a curiosity. Uh -huh. Keeping both hips anchored here to the chair so we're not lifting one hip to get a little further. Then we're just bringing the pelvis into the movement, not a bad thing, but all we're doing at the moment by keeping the hips anchored and the sitting bones anchored is we're keeping the movement in the spine. Keep the breath steady. And then we'll come up all the way through center and release the hands. Big breath in. Exhale it out. Nicely done. And from here, I'm going to sweep that right arm up to the side. Thumb spinning up. I'm going to take that arm across the body. You'll notice that my right shoulder is swung right up by my ear. I'm going to draw that right arm in and then roll that right shoulder back and down and open up through the top of the shoulder. Wiggle those fingers, any numbness tingling in those right hands. You can move that arm a little bit further away from your chest. It just means you're pinching some nerves right up here. Keep the breath going. Keep that right shoulder rolled back and down, wide collarbones. And then when you're ready, we're going to release that. Take the right hand in a fist, and then we're just going to circle through those wrists, one direction, going through all the joints. And then back in the opposite direction here. Nice and steady, nice smooth movements, melted with that aham breath. And then we'll release, spread those fingertips out wide, give those fingers and thumbs a little wiggle. And then we're sending that left arm out, sweeping that left arm over. That left shoulder will creep up by the ear and then we roll it back and down. Drawing the arm in towards the chest as much as the breath is steady and no numbness and tingling through the fingertips. And if that shoulder keeps creeping up, let's roll it back and down, broad collarbones here. Mm -hmm. And then when you're ready, we release. Get that arm a little wiggle. Left hand comes into a fist. Tight or soft, your choice. And then we circle through that wrist. 
Noticing how that feels for us, being curious, ah, hum. Just meet the movement and our body with curiosity. And then we'll release those fingers, give them a little wiggle, spread them wide, and then take the hand back to support as we come into a twist. So I'm using the hands on top of the legs and arms of the chair to start with. This is the inhale, we're gonna to turn to the left, right hand forward, left shoulder and hand back, and inhale back through center. Once again, anchor the feet and seat um, down to the chair so that right hip is not snuggling forward to give us more twist. You can look over that left shoulder if you want to. Never forcing anything, great place to be right here. If you wanna add the hands, let's bend those elbows, take the palms towards me. Keep that right hip rooted, and you can give that right foot about 5% more pressure down to the floor to keep that anchored back. This is the inhale. Ah, and the hum is if you're pushing something heavy over to the left side, inhale, back through center, as if you're pushing. And again, that gaze can come over the left shoulder if you want it to. Arms can extend as much as you like, so you can keep a nice bend in those elbows or extend them out. One is not better than the other. And you can push over towards the front left, the side left, depending on the range of motion you have. Maybe you even take the hands a little bit back behind you. But we're not forcing anything here. Mm -hmm. Keeping that right hip rooted. Let's take one or two more. Ah, pushing as if through water. And then we'll come all the way back through center. Any softness you need, please go ahead and anchor, feet in seat, and rise from there. Hands resting on the legs. This is the inhale and the exhale, we're twisting to the right. Inhaling back through center. Making sure that left hip's not snuggling forward by maybe pushing down into that left foot about 5% no more. Great place to be right here. Shoulders sliding forward and back. Only as much twist as it feels good in your body. Option to add the arms, bend the elbows. This is the inhale on the exhale. Let's push over towards the right side. Keep the pelvis rooted and anchored. Elbows can stay bent or you can extend them out depending on what feels really good for you. Pushing down through that left hip. Let's do a couple more. And we've got one more to go. And then we're coming all the way back through center. Hands come down, big breath in. Exhale it out. Uh -huh. And releasing any tightness and tension that you may have here. Hands resting on the thighs. This is the inhale, we're hinging from the hips here. On the exhale, just bring the shoulders forward. Hands are supporting you. And we inhale all the way up, exhaling down. Keep the belly drawn in towards the spine and keep that overarching out of the back by drawing the collarbones wide and drawing that belly button in. Great place to be right here. And of course, we're lengthening through the back. If you wish to, we're coming forward. Hands can support you or maybe you're coming to forearms. And this may be where you shift and change the width of your legs a little. Now the go-to here for a lot of us is to overarch the back and hang out here. So draw the belly in so we've got that long spine. Chin can draw in towards the chest, we're lengthening the back body and from here we're going to come into a twist. That right hand over towards the left thigh, left hand sliding up towards the hip. 
as the left shoulder slides back and we look to the left. Great place to stay right here. That belly button is drawn in and that right hip is also drawn back. Ah, uh -huh. option to stay here. We'll take that left hand back, sliding by the chair, maybe even taking hold of the back of the chair. And that right wrist, hand, forearm, elbow can twist over to the left side. Maybe the palm slides up as if you're holding something and the right shoulder slides forward, left, back. And here we are in a twist. Maybe even looking over that left shoulder. And we breathe, ah uh -huh. Making sure the belly button is drawn in towards the spine so that lower back is anchored, that right hip drawn back. So again, the twist is in the spine. And then when you're ready, Right hand comes to the left thigh. It's not already there. And then we're coming back through center. Elbows or hands down. Again, notice if you've overarched your back, we take that engagement, we draw the belly towards the spine. Collarbones are wide here. So we're not rounding through the collarbones. Big breath in, exhale it out. Left hand comes to the right thigh. Right hand comes towards the hip side of the chair, maybe even back behind you, depending on the kind of chair you're on and the range of motion. Roll that right shoulder back and we want to the right. This may be enough here. If you want to, you can slide the hand, wrist, forearm, elbow over onto the, the right thigh. Palm maybe turns up, we open the collarbone and we twist. Inhaling and exhaling, making sure that left hip is anchored back so we're not rolling it forward. And if there's any hardening coming through your body here, see where you can soften it and we breathe. Ah, hum. Forward fold twist. So let's take another few breaths here. And then when you feel ready, Gaze comes forward as that left hand comes to the right thigh, bringing the right hand forward. And here we are. Hands come to the thighs and we're going to push those shoulders back up over the hips. Big breath in. Exhale it out. Nicely done. And then from here we're going to slide all the way back into the chair. Coming to the back of the chair, so the back of the pelvis is resting towards the back of the chair. And then we're going to do the same thing. This is the inhale and the exhale, hands or forearms coming forward. And you can slide the seat back in the chair here, depending on the height of your chair, the length of your bones, making sure you feel stable. Draw the belly in towards the spine, so we're not overarching the back here. And yet the collarbones are broad. Great place to stay. If this feels enough to you or you have any problems with balance, any head injuries, any eye conditions where pressure is involved, like glaucoma, you're staying here. Otherwise, the option, hands on the thighs and we're resting the upper body on or in between the thighs. Chins drawn in, so the back of the neck is long, great place to stay. If this feels in any way uncomfortable for you, then you're coming back up to a seat and resting there. Ah, hum, breath. You can take the hands to any height that feels like you're supporting yourself here. And the last option, if you don't have any of those conditions and it feels okay for you, chin draws in and we're laying the shoulders down and the crown of the head reaches towards the ceiling. From here, hands are supporting you. Thighs, shins, ankles, feet, depending on the length of your bones, maybe the hands come to the floor. Sliding your hips back as much as you need to to feel stable. And the last option here is to give that head a little gentle nod and shake as if it was a ripe fruit on a branch. And then option to take opposite elbows and dangle. 
And we're taking that aham breath, but I invite you to take your awareness to the back of the ribs and find movement and breath in the back of the ribs. There's a lot of compression here. Please come out whenever you should need to. Aham, slowing the breath. Mm -hmm. When you're ready, we release the hands if they were gripped. Taking the hands, sliding them back to the top of the legs, draw the chin in, back of the neck is long, and then use the support of the legs to push yourself up, shoulders over hips, sit all ready back into the chair, slide the hips forward. Palms down to ground. Saddle back into the chair and we breathe. Aha. Once the breath is settled, then we come to a mindful seat. Stay in that comfortable place as long as you need to. We take a big breath in. Exhale it out, release any tension, tightness. And from here, a little check-in, noticing how you're doing, your body, any tightness, discomfort. Notice the breath. Settle the breath. And then when you feel ready, I'll meet you down lying down on your back, whether it's down on the floor or it's on your mattress or wherever else you feel comfortable, I will see you there. And again, just at the beginning of class, the option is to take a block and I'll see you down there. Here we are down on the earth. I'm gonna come all the way to my back, making sure that if you do have your block or substitute block that you're bringing it with you. Now we've opened up the back body. I'm going to do the same thing to the front body. Knees to the sky, feet to the floor. Option to pick up the hips and take them a little closer to the heels as we replace the hips down so we lengthen through the spine. And then maybe roll one shoulder blade and another underneath you. If your throat feels quite tight from being here with your head um, down on a smooth surface, feel free to take a folded firm towel or a folded blanket um, underneath the head to lift it up. That can alleviate some pressure here, depending on what feels good for you. And let's just take a few breaths here. On those exhales, let the body sink and settle into the support underneath you. So it's surprising how much tension we hold in our body just when we shift our body. And we have all this support underneath us, so we may as well use it. We start to regulate the breath, come back to that aham breath. Now we're going to root down through our feet. Keep those toes really nice and light. And just like when we were sitting right at the beginning, we push down evenly the inside and outside edge of the feet, ball of the feet, heel of the feet, left and right. And with that soft, steady breath, take the hands either side of your hips nice and wide so the shoulders are settled, palms down. I'm going to push down into the arms from the shoulders, shoulder blades are tucked a little, shoulders, upper arms, elbows, forearms, and hands all the way to the tips of the fingers and thumbs. I'm going to push into both feet and arms evenly, keeping the head down. I'm going to lift up the hips just a little. That's the inhale and exhale, tapping back down. Inhaling, hips lift. Hover, exhaling down. Now, if the hips just get a little lighter, that's perfect. What we're trying to do is even pushing down left and right arms and feet. Now, if you don't feel like you need the arms here, you can take 
the elbows, bend them in towards the waist, fingertips up towards the ceiling, as if you have robot arms or Barbie arms. Push down into the shoulders and the triceps, maybe lifting the hips a little higher. And the option here is to keep pulsing up and down, hovering and tapping down, or we lift and we stay any height. Can you push evenly into the left and right feet? Maybe that gives you a little bit more height there. Pushing down into the hands and arms, all the way to the shoulders or the biceps. And we breathe. And then on the exhale, we're taking those hips all the way down. Beautiful job. Big breath in. Exhale it out. Now I'm going to take that block in between the upper legs. Any height that suits you, usually not the widest height, but the narrow one or the mid one. And we're gripping that block only about 5% of our energy, just so much that um, we're activating a little into the hips. We're activating the inner thighs there that comes up through the core, of course. Your option, hands down next to the hips or Barbie arms, and we're going to be doing the same thing. So regulate the breath. And then we inhale, pushing in through the feet, the shoulders, the arms. We're inhaling up, exhaling, tapping down. And notice if that shifts and changes anything as we draw in towards the block. For a lot of us, it may feel like we get a little more stability there in through the center line of the body as we're drawing in. Now, if the legs are really gripping the block, see if you can ease that to about 5% only. Option to keep pulsing. Option to come up and stay. And we're breathing, keeping that breath. Aham breath. Opening up through the upper body, pushing to the feet, shift the chest a little closer towards the chin maybe, that chin is tucked. And then on one of your next exhales, when you feel ready, we're taking the hips all the way down. Beautiful job. Replay, uh, take that block out, knees in towards each other, ankles wide for a few breaths. And if there's any movement you need to relieve any tension, please go ahead. Then knees to the sky, feet to the floor. Now I'm going to give you option one, and then we're going to add the block just like we did with the bridge pose. Right knee keeps um, bent here, foot to the floor, and we're going to lengthen the left leg along the floor. Now if this feels a lot to you, then keep a nice bend in that left knee. Otherwise, flex through the ankle, and we're pushing down from the pelvis all the way down through that left leg to the heel. So we're not just letting it hang out on the floor here, we're actually activating it and using the muscles of the body to press down into the earth. Great place to be right here. If this is enough and it feels like enough, keep that aham breath going, then you're gonna stay here. Otherwise, we're going to bend that left leg. We're going to take that block or substitute block, lift up through the hips just like you did um, a moment ago with the bridge, and we're going to take the widest part of the block right under the pelvis. And you might need to adjust that a couple of times so that pelvis is now lifted. Making sure that if you wiggle a little bit from side to side here, that you feel stable. I'm going to keep that right knee bent. Option, same thing here. Extend the left leg out. Now we're getting an opening up through the hip, those hip flexors, and lengthening, of course, through the leg. Belly's drawn in towards the spine, so we're not overarching here. And again, we're pushing down gently through that left leg and left heel, as if it's magnetized to the earth. Option to stay here. 
Option, if it feels okay to you, to take the arms in a cactus or a T. Option, to stay there. Or lift the arms above the head, palms facing the ceiling. You can keep a nice bend in those elbows or reach, or as if you are having the thumbs to the floor, as if you're holding a beach ball as big or as small as you need for your shoulders, we lengthen. And if you do have those thumbs to the floor, then push them down into the earth, widen the collarbones and push that left heel down. Ahambra. Anything doesn't feel right, you're bending that left knee 